I can 110% tell you that this TBR is going to change. Like, I literally know it's going to because my mood has been all over the place with what I want to read. But um, these are the books that are on my radar right now for November. But again, my mood has been so just like all over the freaking place. So uh, let's get into all the books that are on my TBR for November, the books that I want to read first and comment below the books that you guys are wanting to read in November because I feel like it is one of the best books, the best months to read books. We're gonna start off first with thrillers. These are all thrillers that I feel like will be perfect for the season. And I feel like for November and October, really, I dive deep into thrillers. So I put some on here that I've been wanting to read for a while, but I definitely feel like I'm gonna get more um, throughout the month. But I decided that I wanted to do like five thrillers, five of this, five of that, because I feel like whenever I swap books out, like if I just like want to mood read for something else, five's a good amount, you know what I mean? So I do have five thrillers right here, but again, I might end up reading eight, I might end up reading 10, um, really just depends on my mood, but I didn't want to put like 10 thrillers and then end up only reading like five and then reading other stuff. Honestly, Sometimes I'm like, why do I even do my TBR? Because I never read my TBR, but I don't even really try to because like I don't read the books that I put on my TBR for each month, I'll say that. Um, and I don't even really try to because if I'm in the mood for something else, like I will grab something off my shelf and read something else and that is totally fine. But one of the first books that I wanna read that's a thriller is The Dark Place. This looks really good, it's by a black author and I haven't heard a ton about it, but I do know that it's young adult and the girl is 17 years old and she disappears. And I don't know like really what happens outside of that, but this is a book that isn't super hyped up, um, which is why I feel like I want to read even more because you guys know that I love hyping up authors that deserve more hype. I also want to read Tell Me Lies. I don't really know what this book is about. I kind of like to go into my thrillers pretty blind, so I'm not gonna really read the backs of these or talk too much about these just because I do like to go into them blind. I just know that this is a TV show and everyone's been talking about it and I have not read the book yet and I'm the type of person where I have to read the book first and then I'll watch the show but a lot of the time I don't end up even watching the show I just read the book like Bridgerton I think that that's the only like show that I watch first but everything else like I have watched I've read the book and I didn't even end up watching the show like Daisy Jones and the Six haven't watched the show haven't finished uh the summer I turned pretty show like there's just so many shows that I've wanted to watch and like, oh, I need to read the book first. And then I read the book and I'm like, eh, I know enough about it. I don't need to watch the show. So this honestly might end up being like that, but I've heard great things about this book. Um, I think that this is a thriller, but it also has romance in it, like heavy on the romance. So this could be a good read if you're wanting to read a thriller for the first time and you normally read romance. It says, everyone remembers the one, no, not that one, the other one, the wrong one, the one you couldn't let go of, the one you'll never forget. So decided to read that. This is a book that's been on my TBR so many times and I have not ended up picking it up mostly because it's just daunting to read. Um, you guys know I love a good fast paced thriller and I kind of feel like this one's not gonna be fast paced and it's like 400 pages and the text is really small. So someone comment below, if you've read this book and you liked it, please let me know. I've heard great things about Karen Slaughter. I've never read any of her books. And you guys know I love a good thriller. Um, and this is about, I'm pretty sure, Survivors who were kidnapped in the past, and I think it tells like the future, um, like their story in the future or something like that. I don't wanna go into it with too many preconceived ideas. I have heard great things about it, which is why I keep gravitating towards it, but I, you guys know, I do not play with my thrillers. Like I, I've never found a five star thriller. Isn't that wild? Like I literally have never found one and I think it's because I just, like thrillers are hard to get with me. I love thrillers, I like, love them, but a lot of the time I'll rate them like three, four stars, um, just because it's hard to one, connect to the characters because you don't really trust any of them. And two, I want it to be fast paced, but I also want it to have like intricate details where it feels like I'm not figuring out the story on my own. Um, and that's very hard to do. I feel like it's almost one or the other. It's almost always really fast paced, but a very easy storyline and you kind of know what's gonna happen. Or it's super intricate, it's kind of slower, a little dull, um, and it's just hard to blend the two. I haven't found a book that has blended it yet, even though I read multiple thrillers a month. And then I also have Grey After Dark. This is by Noelle uh, Illy. 
and this looks really good i actually read the back of this book in one of my last videos so if you guys want to um read the whole back you can literally just go and watch one of my last videos i unbox this but it's a psychological thriller it's supposed to be a pulse pounding thriller it says a merciless wilderness a harrowing attack a desperate escape pretty sure someone's kidnapped I, a lot of these thrillers are kidnappings but honestly books with kidnappings don't really scare me that much mostly because i'm like Who's gonna kidnap me in Springfield, Illinois? Like, I mean, it's definitely possible, but in my head, I just assume that this always happens in like big cities and not like small towns because if I get kidnapped in this town, like people are gonna know I'm gone. People are gonna know where to check. Like it is small, you know what I mean? Like this town is small. So not small, but small enough. Like it's, it's small in comparison to Chicago, which is like three hours from us or St. Louis, which is an hour and a half from us. So. Anyway, granted it is not small. Like the town that Brady grew up in was 600 people that small. <laughs> and then I also wanna read the final scene. This is also another book that I recently picked up. And if you guys want the whole little like uh, synopsis, I read the back of this, um, but I'm pretty sure it's just about someone who's like in a cabin, they were kidnapped, they're trying to escape. I kind of like those. I just don't really get too scared of those like types of books. Now books with like exorcisms, absolutely not we're not reading books about demons like we're that kind of stuff freaks me out anything that's like spirits and ghosts and stuff absolutely not but kidnappings no nah, that doesn't scare me at all and then i also have a stack of romances these are all romances but half of them are like super popular like book talk ones that you see all the over the internet and the other half are not so these are the popular ones and this one right here sunny disposition this is by Deanna Gray. I read uh, Outdrawn by Deanna Gray, which is a sapphic romance that I thought was super cute. And so I wanna read more from this author. This is the first book. And this is actually a hockey romance. Um, and it just looks freaking cute. Like I feel like I will really enjoy this story. It's told in uh, two POVs. And you get Finn and Naomi's story, both of them, and the cover itself is just freaking cute. I actually own book two as well. Um, and I'm actually more excited to read book two than book one. Not for really any specific reason, but I just heard that book two is like so, so good. So it's kind of one of those books where I'm excited for it, but I just feel like book two is gonna be even better. And then I also have Heartless. You guys told me to continue the series and I have the original or like second covers, not the original original, but the covers that aren't in Barnes and Noble I have and I own the entire series. This is one of the few books where I bought the entire series. I just knew I was gonna love it. I just was like, cowboy romances, I'm gonna eat it up. I'm from a town that's like not that big. Like I'm just, I'm gonna love it. And the first book, to me, the spice took over the story. It was really easy to read, it was really fun to read, but I have this thing where sometimes I think that people will hype up books on book talk because they're easy to read and not because they're necessarily like great works of art or great like books. Um, and I feel like that book, Flawless, was good for some people, not for me, but good for some people, but it was super easy to read. So I'm like, maybe that's part of it. So I'm hoping that the story in this book is even better. I've heard that this is better, it's about, um, a nanny who's working for a single dad. Um, I just feel like I will like it. Also, I enjoyed Cade in the first book and I did not like Rhett in the first book. So I think that also was part of it. Like Summer and Rhett were just so annoying to me in the first book, mostly because Rhett was just like such a child. And I like a man who is like a man, not a child. Like I want a man who is like, you know, like I'll handle business. And I feel like Cade's gonna do that. So hopefully I'll like the second book in the series. I own the rest of the series. And I also bought um, Wild Love, which I don't know why I did that when I didn't even like the first book in the series. And I just bought another one, but um, I bought it a while back. And I was thinking maybe I could read another book out of a different series and maybe I would like that better. But now I'm kind of just like, I just wanna finish what I started because I already own them anyway. I'm also gonna read Revive Me. I guess this is just my month of giving authors like second chances because I read Restore Me by JL Seegers and so many people loved it and I was not obsessed and I think it's just because the spice took over the story. I have such a hard time with like spice taking over the characters in the storyline. Now, I do like spice, but it has to be done in a way where I don't feel like the spice is more important than the characters or like what they're going through or whatever. So I'm hoping that this is a little bit better. I am excited for this one because Mallory was one of the characters in Restore Me that I liked a lot. And I think she's real feisty. Um, and I also like characters like that. So 
Um, I do know that this is gonna be spicy, but I feel like Christopher and Mallory kind of have more like tension. Like you see in the first book that they like broke up and got back together or like, or they, I don't know if they got back together, but they broke up and like something broke them up and like they're kind of like fighting in the first book. And in the first book, Dominic and Sloane, they just seemed too easy to me. And it was just like, okay, I know you guys are gonna get together. Like I just, I had a hard time feeling super invested. So I feel like I'm even more invested in this one. I also want to read Daydream, and this is actually my most anticipated book out of the entire series. I read Wildfire literally so I could get to this book, so I cannot wait to read this one. Um, I feel like everyone and their mom has already read this book. I've heard some mixed reviews, but I still want to read it myself because that was my most anticipated read. And then I have these four, which are not super popular or hyped up, um, but I like to add those in there as well, just for like a little mix. And I have Let the Games Begin, and this is a book that was actually newly released. I love reading books that are newly released, especially if there aren't tons of reviews, because I can be the one to put y'all on. And if it's maybe a book that wasn't for me, I can tell you why it wasn't, and maybe the thing that I didn't like out of the book, maybe you did love it, or would love it. So um, this says, set against a sizzling hot Greek summer filled with sunshine and Sil Silvaki. Rufario, Faith, Mizura's Let the Games Begin is a page-turning rom-com debut about two strangers at the top of their game, and I'm pretty sure they both like play soccer. And then I also have, um, oh, and this is by a black author. I don't know if I told you guys that, but there were, um, Sunny Disposition was also by a black author as well. I like to mix up the authors and genres and try to add in different types of books um, just for that reason because I feel like it's important. I also have Fall For Him, which is a queer read. I read uh, Fly With Me by this author and it was such a good story. One of my favorite sapphic romances that I think I've probably ever read and I actually recommended it to my niece recently and I know that she's gonna love it. Um, and this book is, it just looks like it's gonna be so good. It just came out this year. It says, with hilarious hijinks and heart, Fall For Him is about finding out what it really means to fix things when life crumbles. Again, I don't know too much about it, but I've actually been enjoying going into books pretty blind um, just because I don't know what's happening and it makes the story even more interesting versus if it's like, on the back, so and so got fired from their job, they have to live together, and then something, something, like, I'm like, okay, I already know what's gonna happen. And like, going into it blind, it allows me to kind of like, have little surprises and nuggets along the way. And then I also want to read The Gravity of Us by Brittany Cherry. Now, this is the fourth book in this series. Um, you do not have to read them in order, but this is an arc and it does not come out until December. I still have to read The Silent Waters, which is the third book in the series. So I'm hoping to maybe read that maybe sometime this month. Um, we'll see. But this says, they say some people aren't meant to be together, that Graham and I were too different to ever make any sense. I was driven by emotion, he kept his walls high. I dreamed of a brighter future and he passed his days in nightmares. And it just looks like it's gonna be one of those deep heartfelt romances, similar to the other two books that I've read in the, uh, I think it's called the Element series, yeah. The Element series. And then I'm gonna read The Paradise Problem. I already put this on my TBR, didn't end up reading it, but then I read The X-Vows, and one of you guys was like, if you love The X-Vows, you have to pick up The Paradise Problem. It reminds me a lot of Love and Other Words, which is one of my favorite books by this author duo. So I am going to pick it up. I'm putting it back on my TBR, and hopefully I'll read it soon. It definitely is giving summer and not fall, but I loved the X-Vows, I loved Love and Other Words so much. Like those soft romances just make me feel all ooey gooey inside. And I don't know why, but that screams fall to me. Even though the cover doesn't scream fall, maybe I'll just take it off and just like read like this. Because I feel like those soft romances and the ones that are emotional are the ones that are like great for the fall. I will say this is like more rom comic, but still, whatever. You guys get the gist. And then I also have Catch Me If You Can by Christina C. Jones. Um, this looks like a cute love story. It's very short. I think it's only, yeah, it's like right at 300 pages. And I've read uh, one or two other books by this author that I really enjoyed, so I feel like I'll like this one. This is the beginning of a series, so I'll probably have to buy the rest of the series if I end up enjoying it. And then I also have some books that are like contemporary fiction and historical fiction. I do think that I'm gonna add in more 
contemporary fiction I only have one in this stack and that's why I, I always say like my stack will definitely change over time because right now it's like heavy on the romance uh, I think there's like eight romances and like it's a little lighter on other genres but I know that if I read like Christmas romances I'll probably like not want to read as many of the other romances that I have so it will definitely change for sure so you guys definitely have to watch the vlogs because I always try to vlog most of the books I read or if I don't vlog them I'll put them in my wrap up but Evie Drake Starts Over is a book that I have heard great things about. It says the heartfelt New York Times bestselling debut about the unlikely relationship between a young woman who's lost her husband and a major league pitcher who's lost his game. And it just looks like it's going to be a good one. I also have some books I'm just now realizing as I say this that are in a haul that I'm going to be opening in one of my like videos. I think the one that goes up on Saturday. And some of the books in there are books that I took with me when I went to Vegas and my stuff got stolen there. Um, so I like bought them again. And now I'm thinking like I might actually want to put those on my TBR because I literally brought them to read and that means that I want to read them like soon. Another book that I have is Sisters in Arms. This is a historical fiction. This just looks so good. It's about the um, 6888 and it's the only black, the only all black uh, women's battalion in the Army Corps um, or the Women's Army Corps. So I just feel like this is going to be great. I've been really leaning into historical fiction, especially when it's told in first person. Third person, I, I feel like would be harder, but first person for me has just been really enjoyable because I can really put myself into the character's like own shoes. And then I also want to read All We Were Promised. I shared a video with like historical fiction book reps on TikTok, Instagram, I think I shared it on YouTube like shorts. Um, and so many people are like, oh my God, you have to read this, it's amazing. It says the past of three young women in pre-Civil War Philadelphia unexpectedly and dangerously collide in this debut novel inspired by the explosive history of a divided city. And it's told in 1837. Um, I also like hardback books better than like soft paperbacks. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but it actually makes me want to read them more when they're hardback. And then I also have three Christmas books. I don't have a ton of Christmas books because I feel like I'm going to want to read most of them in December just because it still is fairly warm. Like it's not giving fall yet. Um, like fully fall. There are some days that are very chilly. Like we've had very cold nights, like 30 degrees um, Fahrenheit like nights. And during the daytime, it'll be between like 75 degrees and 55 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So like I never really know what it's gonna be like, but it's definitely not giving Christmas, you know? So I feel like once it starts to get really chilly, the sun changes or like gets darker earlier, um, I will definitely want to pick these up more. Uh, Second Chance Christmas. This is a book that looks so good. It says old flames are reunited with the burden of their past and a love that still lingers in this heartfelt holiday romance. It's about a girl who had like a hard, tragic like younger life and she really only got solace with her boyfriend because he was the only like stable person in her life and then something ends up happening that tears them apart and then she ends up having to go back to her hometown where like he still lives and so I think at this point she's like divorced she has a kid um and I don't know if they divorced or what like I don't even know so it'll be interesting to see like how this pans out it says do old wounds run too deep or can the joy of Christmas provide enough healing power for a second chance love reunion and then I also want to read Christmas in spite of you this these are actually books that are like I think supposed to come together because the spines match there's actually a third book that I have um but I think I want to read that one in December um but this one is it looks like it's gonna be like funny and like spicy. It says a neat freak Scrooge and a Christmas loving ball of chaos must coexist for a week and the friction and separation that ensue make the most magical time of the year highly remarkable. Um, it's, it just, it looks cutesy, it looks funny. I feel like those are the books that I gravitate towards for the holiday season. And then I also have this arc that doesn't come out until November, but I do think that this is an arc um, that they're just re-releasing with a new cover, I'm pretty sure. I, don't quote me on that one, but this is by Jennifer Lynn Armentrout. I'll link all these books below. This says, no one could replace me in his life. I knew that. I was the friend who knew everything about him and whom he trusted above everything or above everyone else. Um, and that's all I need to know. I've read two books by this author, really loved one, and the other one was just okay. Um, so I feel like that'll kind of be the deal breaker. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little TBR. Comment below what you're excited to read. This TBR will definitely change. Like I literally would like 
bet my life on it that this TBR is going to change because I just know myself. I never stick to my TBR. I have eight romances on here and I could get into a thriller mood and want to read 20 thrillers or I could get into a contemporary fiction mood and I only have one contemporary fiction on in this stack and I could want to read six. So this last month was definitely different because I read probably more probably more thrillers and like books outside of romance that I've read in a really long time, maybe ever. Um, and with that, I feel like whenever I read outside of my favorite genre, which is romance, I always gravitate back towards it and I'm even more excited to read it. So after reading historical fiction, I'm like, whew, I need something light. Like give me my romance. And I don't know, I, I will say I haven't been finding myself reading back to back to back to back to back romance. I'm finding myself reading like a thriller and then a romance and then contemporary fiction and then a romance and then historical fiction and then a romance or thriller and a thriller and a romance. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like this fall season is perfect for the romances that are very like deep and heartfelt. Um, but I will say I've been really enjoying stepping out into different types of genres and new authors. So hope you guys enjoyed this entire video. Comment below what you guys are reading. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.